All right, so let's take a look at, so tonight's conference call, we're going to break down four conference calls in a row. All right. Our first setup, and this is the, the first setup that everyone should know how to do, first wave setup. There's four different setups in the trade room. Specifically, these four setups are specific to our methodology. If we don't know how to do these four setups, then we can't trade the zone methodology. I'm going to put these in order of importance. So, like I was telling all you members now, and since I'm recording this so everyone will know, tonight, at the conference call, we're specifically going to go over the easiest setup to recognize in the trade room. If you cannot understand this setup, and this works on all futures, like I said, all futures, all stocks, all Forex, all currency, and all crypto markets, if we cannot understand this first setup, you really should move up, move on to setup two, three, and four. So this is the first way setup that happened this morning at 8.39 this morning on the NQ. This was a buy setup. This is a first way setup. So the first 30 minutes tonight on the conference call and the first 30 minutes on every conference call, I'm strictly going to go over indicator, how you can use chart trader on Ninja Trader, how you can use your automated trail to look for this specific setup. The second half of the half of the conference call, I'm going to show you how you can use our automated management software to turn on and what settings to put in to capture this first wave setup. So that's tonight at 4 p.m. We'll spend a whole hour on just the first wave setup, first 30 minutes indicator, second 30 minutes how to strategy in and the specific settings that you can use and change to automate this first wave setup. Okay? That's the next conference call. The next conference call we'll have, and we'll record these for you for members. The second setup we have in the room, and this is no this number two and number three are no, they're not in order, so they can happen one before the other one and the other one before uh, each other. So number two and three are the next two important setups. It would be the FZR setup, or what I call a slingshot. So then our next conference call, and I go over these in the room anyway, our next conference call is going to be the first 30 minutes, how to trade the indicator on the slingshot. All right, so how to trade the indicator on the slingshot. And then the next 30 minutes on that specific conference call, we'll, trade, we'll show you how to trade the strategy on the slingshot. So those are our two first setups, our first, setups, our, our first two setups we have in the trade room. The third setup that we'll do specifically on the third conference call is our momentum setup or this is called a MOMO. And once again, first 30 minutes indicator, next 30 minutes auto strategy, auto management software. And we will name those specifically in the on our website so you can review those. That is our third specific setup. So these are all trend setups. We only have four setups. We have three with trend and one, one counter trend trade setup. These are trend trades. If you don't want to counter trend trade the market, you should only look for these three setups in the market every single day on every single market. You don't need to learn, learn any other setups. You don't need to add any other indicator. You don't need to add a MAC or another RSI or divergence or all this other stuff. You know. These are trend setups with my zone trend. This is all you need to understand about price action according to my methodology. These are the only setups you need to learn in the trade room. These are called trend trades. These three specific setups. You don't need to understand any other setups at all according to this the room methodology.
That's it, right here. Those are trend trades. Okay. Now, in order of importance, is the first way trade. So there's a first way trade. There's an FZR setup momentum. What you'll want to do is you'll need to understand the first wave setup first. And we'll go over that this evening. This is a first wave setup. We'll go over that this evening tonight in the conference call. You need to understand the setup before you go to two and three. First wave setup, learn this one first, then go two and three. The last, this is a first wave setup happening again right here. You can see it right there. Another first wave. I'll go over this in one second to show you why I'm on audio here. The rhythm of the market in trend, what I come up with, these are my own proprietary setups. You won't find these anywhere else in the in the in trade rooms. I came up with these specific setups and named them myself with my specific proprietary zone indicator. First wave setup. It's another first wave that happened. So if you do not understand how to trade the first wave, I'm educating this all year like this and the, from now on, on all markets, you need to understand how to trade that setup because it's very simple to see. And I'll go over it in one second after I show you the failure trade. All right, this is live market action right now on the NQ. The fourth setup is now a counter trend setup. So if you do not want to counter trend trade the market, but you want to get into a failure trade like this, called a failure trade, I'll show you price action when zones fail. And I'll show you before they even fail, before they happen, so you can take advantage of it. This is called a failure setup. Failure zone setup. So these are the four specific trades that you need to understand if you're going to understand price action with this method. What I've done over the last 30 plus years, I've put this together and it's a culmination of working with over and over different Fibonacci zones, different zones. I used to have dots when I first opened the trade room, Fibonacci dots that would show you specific 62% retracements. We sort of put all that stuff together. We had compression trades. That's the zone also. Everything really was the zone that we come up with. I just made it easier for the traders to understand and see now. I made this very simple. It's four setups. It's a culmination since Gerald and I has had, have had the room open. It's a combination of all our methodologies put into four specific setups. What I did is I compressed them into the rhythm of the market. So right now, this trade right now is still running the first wave setup. What I wanted to do is I wanted to come up with four specific setups, and I didn't need to have specific four. This is just how it came up with. But these three specific setups, we, we've been working uh, for the last year plus year, year and a half of these three specific setups. But how I want to train and educate traders is I want to show you the importance of every setup. So these are trend trades, the first three there, and this is a counter trade. So now things become a lot clearer and there's no brain fog for traders. Because I'm going to educate traders and they have no questions in their mind of what's my favorite setups in the room and what's a counter trend trade and what's a trend trade because I'm specifically doing four conference calls on these four setups that work on a daily basis over and over again. You'll see thousands and thousands of trades 
on any given market with these four specific setups. And I'm going to show you the importance of them and how they work together in the trade room all, every single year. So Wednesday, Wednesday, or every single month, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, I will be training on these specific four setups. So that's a counter trend trade, which is a failure. All right. So these are trend trades. And last one is a counter trade. So I just want to let everybody know that's what we're doing going forward on training how to use the automated system and how to use the indicator. Some traders don't want to automate at all. They want an indicator-based system because they like using chart trader and so on. And that's fine. Someone like automation with it. That's fine. I'll show you how to do both. Okay. Let's go over these setups for why they're happening right now. So, let's look at price action. What a first wave says is this. And I'm going to go over an hour of this tonight, so I want to cut this video off pretty quick so Gerald can shut this off in one second. A first wave setup, if you do not know how to trade a first wave setup, if you do not know how to trade this, please do not move on to FZR momentum. This is the easiest trade to spot with my zones. If you cannot extract ticks from the market from a first wave setup from what I'm showing you, then you really shouldn't look at FCR momentum setups, period. You shouldn't jump around from setup to setup setup. You should go order of importance, first wave. After you get that down, you're doing well. You can move to these specific two setups together. They don't have it happen in any specific order. Understand the FCR setup. We'll do a whole hour conference call on this, whole hour on this one. So right now, I'm looking for these four setups as price action is ticking. The last one is a counter trend trade, a failure trade. So let's go down through them real quick, and I'm going to shut this off for Gerald. First wave trade, very specifically, you got to have a trend change. And I'm going to go over this tonight for an hour. It's got to go red to green or green to red. There's, there's, specific, there's specific wrinkle sizes I like to use. I put them in quadrants, 40. 35, 30, 35, entry chart would be the 20 over here. Because on these four quadrant charts, you may have specific setups happening on the larger Rinko sizes that could produce larger moves, but you could still enter off of a 20 Rinko chart with smaller stops. Okay, I'll go over that this evening. But the first wave says this, I go red to green. It's just happened. We had two or two for two on wave setups here after the news. After you get a red to green, you look for the first retracement. A retracement is when you get an opposite color. Candle, or opposite color, Rinko per se. It turned red. Or you get a doji. Once a doji forms or opposite color, you look at your oscillator signal lines below. Your main one, the thick line, which is our 21, that's your main indicator for a first wave. I don't need my thin 7 over here, my oscillator, to agree, but I'll show you when it does, they're explosive. I need my specific trend signal to be above 80. If I get above, if I close green, red to green, get ready for setup, just like right now. It turned red to green. You're getting ready for a first wave setup right now. You're ready to pull yourself in. 
So when this turn red to green, when that specific retracement or doji start happening, you want to look at your oscillator below. Are we above and staying above 80 right here? This big cyan line I have. When you get a pull-in bar that happens and you get a green pull-in bar, this is where the arrow fired on the on your system you have an audible alert that fires there it fired an audible alert fired right here for us on your computer that is a buy setup then you can trail with your targets etc your stop is two ticks below that swing low then you can adjust your stop you can use a chart trader going two Rico's back all the way up if you want to be Keep it stop tight, or you can have an automated trail system built into Ninja with an ATM. The second rink, the second signal line, you can see it never broke 65, and that's a rule of thumb. You do not want to break below 65 with the larger signal line or smaller, uh, the larger signal line at all. There's no trade. The best signal line is above 80. If you just want to specifically go above 80, and I'm going to go over this tonight for an hour. That's perfect. But this larger signal line can pull all the way down above 65, and we're still good to go. What I like specifically is this. I like my larger signal line to be above 80, stay above 80. When we get pulled in here, and I want my smaller signal line to stay above 65. If it does that, I got a perfect setup. That's a perfect wave setup. Look over here, happen the same thing. We get red to green, trend change. I'm looking to pull into the market on my first setup, first wave setup. My larger signal line is above 80. Check. It's allowed to go all the way down to 65. I'm still good. But I'm looking for my specific setup to be in a perfect position of a stronger position in the market. I'm above 80 on my larger signal line. You don't have to have the smaller signal line, but when it lines up like this, it's perfect alignment. My sort of small signal line, I don't want to go below 65 when I get pulled in. It stays below 65. Now, I want you to take a look at both of these setups. Do they look identical? Look at it. Yes. Do you think that's just by chance? No. You'll see these trades happen over and over and over and over and over again when you specifically look how I'm teaching you how to look for these setups. That is perfect alignment that's happening on the NQ this morning. You can't get better than that. The entry is the first green bar reversal. You can trail. Your stop is two ticks below the swing low. You can trail two, two back. If you want a tight trail, every time it moves up the Renko, you can keep trailing two back. Because the Rinko, we should never break the low of the previous candle, or it's going to turn red. The previous Rinko, I'm sorry. So you can keep trailing, trail, 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 two back, two back, two back, two back. Then there's your stop out on that setup right here. Or if you have targets built in, target one, target two, target three, let target run for a thousand ticks if you want. That's a good way to do it. I like scaling as we go through. So specifically, that's called a first wave setup. That's the number one setup in the room. The second one is a failure trade, and we're performing a failure trade right now as we speak. We're forming a failure possible FZR. I got an FZR. I don't have a momentum trade. I don't have a first wave trade, right? As a first wave trade, let's look at right now, setting up right now in live market action. I don't have a, a first wave trade because it trend changed green to red, but it had to stay, my signal line had to stay below 20. Did not. First wave is not happening. FZR setup as a slingshot is happening. It's at the outer zone. But I have to have this oscillator pull me in below 40 and 20 below here. It's got to pull me in. It's got to jet down through 40 and 20 to pull me short FZR. So that's still active. 
you have a momentum setup. Momentum setup says if I'm shorting, I got to stay below 65. So I don't have a momentum setup, and I don't have a first wave setup. So I've only got two setups let up, set up in the in price action right now. I've got an FZR setup and a failure setup. A failure setup like this one says this. When I come to the outer zone, which it did right here, comes to my outer zone, and it's not a first wave, it's not a momentum trade. So it's either an FCR or failure trade. So when I get to this outer zone, it can only be two things. It can only be a failure trade or a FCR trade. How do you know which one it is? It's an FCR trade if my oscillator below my signal line for an entry jets straight up through 65. Some traders will let it jet right straight through 80 right here for an entry. Like right now. Right now it's... FZR, right? We're working on the FZR trade right now. It's an FZR. It's forming. Okay? That's an FZR. So on this failure trade, it did not jet through this knot. So a failure trade says this. If I'm on the outer zone, if I break, if I break this specific, oh, I got the words off here in one sec. If I break, I'll shut this off here in one sec. If I break the low, of that bar on the outer zone, that's a trade, and this is a short. If my signal line stays below 80 on failure trades, or stays below 20 on shorts, and above 20 on buys. I specifically will go over all these in four separate conference calls. But this is the best one, guys. The first wave trade. Learn that trade setup.